2023 elections, what we want as a people. So when this question is posed, the answers that quickly and easily come to mind are, one, insecurity and how to tackle it by revamping the security forces. Um, two, improve infrastructures in the education sector by way of more funding for schools, the buildings, teachers, lecturers, salaries, and development. Healthcare sector through allocation of more funding to facilities and staff. Power sector, focus on building more modern refineries so we can refine our crude locally instead of exporting crude and importing PMS at a higher cost. Five, reduce the cost of running the government. Six, overhaul and sanitize the judicial system so that consequences exist and are enforced no matter whose ox is gored. These are just to mention a few, and the list can go on. I believe that these however, are symptoms of an underlying problem. All the things I've mentioned are driven by some, some fundamentals that are lacking, which are the root cause of the symptoms that I've mentioned, the major one being leadership, governance, and systems. We want sincerity, integrity, openness, and accountability in our leaders. Everything rises and falls on leadership. That's what I was trying to say, Kyrie. So, leadership has to hold itself to high standards and act in the interest of the overall good of the people. They have to be willing to make sacrifices and have a genuine desire to provide the nation with direction. That is currently missing. We want a leadership with high moral compass that is able to distinguish between right and wrong and to know how they should behave. We want governance to show itself at certain standards. So governance, and governance is driven by systems. People come and go, but systems remain. Corruption stems from people. It's because systems don't work that you have to engage people. So if you want to tackle corruption, then the system needs to change. Every time a system fails, you are opening the door for corruption because you will have to ask someone. It is then implied that the person being asked is doing you a favor. And so you have to show appreciation for this favor by offering an incentive. Try applying for a Nigerian passport or driver's license, and I think you will understand exactly what I'm talking about. We need to overall the psyche of the people. So the people themselves, they need, we, the people, we need to deliver ourselves. We are responsible for the leaders that we have. There, there were 84 million registered voters in the 2019 elections, out of which only 27 million people voted. That is less than a third of the registered voters. And the people who don't vote, they are the problem. They create a chance for all the shenanigans that we see. We've been conditioned to believe that we only have two choices and that they're from the dominant parties, namely APC and PDP, and also that our choices don't really matter. Again, I refer to the 2019 election where there were 73 presidential candidates, but who remembers who they are? In speaking to people, you find out that they voted thinking they had no option and that their votes won't really count. Anyway, these votes have been counted, it's been rigged, the president has been chosen, so why bother to vote? And politicians continue to exploit this because they understand, understand the psychology of the people. For 2023, we need an urgency of action. At this time, we need radical decisions to be taken. About 75% of our population is below 35 years. That population can be a tool for good or evil, depending on how you use it. They can actually change the trajectory of what currently obtains. Well, where are they? Where are they now? We need the Nigerian youth in 2023 to wake up and to realize just how much is at stake and that they are not powerless. We are not powerless. <laughs> so, Ruth, <laughs> talk to me. I mean, I think we just share the same sentiments. Funny enough, our topics are similar. Yeah. I, 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 <laughs> I think we're all just tired. We want to change. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. I, and each time I think around this topic, it's just sad. Um, the fact that we've been conditioned to actually think that we actually our votes don't count. Mm. Mm. That lies started from 
the first time we ever had um, democracy election, um, democratic election in recent times. I feel like people just have consistently believed, and it has gotten worse by the day. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the trend, I mean, of voting, you realize that um, 1999 elections where you have you have had more people. In fact, during the I was I was not probably born then, but during the Abiola elections, <laughs> or I was not conscious. Let's put it that way. During the Abiola's elections, I heard that um, there were the turnout was very large. It was now you move down. That was that was cancelled, and then so people that affected a lot of people's psychology. Yeah. So moved down to 99 elections, it was like a relief for us. I think that would have also had a very great turnout. But by the time you moved downwards, yard -wide elections, good luck elections, then Buari election and all, you realize that over the years, people have just been led to believe, either by hook or crook, or whichever way they have tried to do it. And even by the narrative that is even preached many times in the media, mm -hmm. that elections, our elections don't count. So while I always feel like people should go out to vote, but I also try to understand the root cause of this problem. So mm -hmm. that's why I also try to also have this kind of conversations and say, you know what, your vote actually counts. It you does. should not sit at home. No matter what it takes, you should, even, if it, even if you have to travel far, because of the way our system is, if you're patriotic enough, you would do it. Mm. If you had to go for an, if you had to go for, if you had to go for a job interview and you're in Lagos and a job interview is in Port Harcourt, you would still go. Absolutely, because yeah. you have something to gain. That's exactly, it. but the truth is, you that. even have more to gain from an election because it affects not just your life but the life of your children and mm. children, and children's children. Mm. So I think we need to start thinking in that direction. Mm. You see, when, when it comes to youth and uh, voting or elections, I. I like to use this analogy. I, I, I don't know if you've noticed it. In, in Lagos, for example, when you go to the ATM booth, mm. and uh, maybe there, there are like four ATM machines, and you see everybody using one machine. <laughs> then there are about 10 people on the queue. Then I get there, and I see people on the queue, and I just decide to try the other ATM. And it pays. And everybody is asking me, it they pay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm supposed to be asking you, you've I been on the queue for you know? <laughs> now, what I'm saying is that the people, we do that a lot because we believe that, except we've seen someone use it, ATMs are not reliable. You could put your card in and it wouldn't work and all those things. Your card. Yeah. So what I'm saying is this, we need, in terms when it has to do with the youth, the youth have that mentality towards election, but they need somebody that can come out and convince them mm. that by voting, you're not wasting change. your time. And that by voting, you're actually taking your destiny to your hands. Mm. Because everybody is struggling to survive. Mm. And we're doing, and a lot of, they are very vibrant youth, and of course they are very negative, lazy ones as well. Mm. So it's a balance. I don't even know where it sways the most. But if you're able to let these people see, the youth see that, listen, you have this opportunity to try to make Nigeria whatever you feel it should be. Mm. Make Nigeria the America of, of Africa make or Nigeria whatever. Great again. Great again. <laughs> you know? They will because like I said during my presentation, that a lot of Nigerians don't they don't even know that Nigeria was ever great. Yeah. When you say giants, you say, what kind I of giants? What, what's what's <laughs> they met but the giants sleeping. I'm, I met the giants sleeping. Comfort. Exactly. What do you what do you have to say, Comfort? Um honestly I don't want to say anything because um Every we discuss this all the time, literally every time we come on this platform. And mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to the day that we will not be talking about this, but we would have been talking of the evolution of mm -hmm. this. And in every single time we are talking about leadership, bad followership, bad uh, and voter, and all that, anyway, having, having complained, <laughs> the, little that I will <laughs> the little that I will contribute to this is that. There is a huge, 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 and for emphasis, huge task ahead of all of us. Hmm. If you look at societies like US, UK, they are built on years of tradition and consistency. Systems. That, consistency. And that, that evolved with the people. Yeah. That people were custodians of it and passed it down to the next group mm. coming saying, look, 
this is how this thing is going to continue, has to continue because mm -hmm. it's not only about us, it's about our future generation. Yeah. Planning and all that. We don't have any, we are at literally at minus ground zero on this mm -hmm. issue. So even if we keep on talking about this is what we want and all that, what needs to be in place, which is the mindset first, is minus zero. Mm. What needs to be in place about the, the issue of even the, the building blocks of the system is being taken apart by the same people who need to build it. Mm. So yes, we can say this is what we want. We, all of, we including we sitting down here, but the truth is, when we find ourselves at the at the point of these systems that we're looking at here, and we know that if we don't, if we can't beat it, we have to join it. We join it. No, mm. I. So again, that's. I think that's the thing, isn't it? Because we're thinking when a good man, when an, a man who is ready for accountability and integrity comes. We say he's a mumu, you know, like what you said about him. We say he's a mumu because the, the, the average Nigerian doesn't understand decency. Mm -hmm. We're used to being cheated. And when somebody's not cheating, you're thinking, mm, they must, I, I must be missing something There's something fishy. What are you here. offering? So what I say is this, just in rounding up, I'm a Nigerian. Mm. And I was saying earlier when we were talking that I don't know that a lot of people can say that they're Nigerians. A lot of people are Igbo, they're Yoruba, they're whatever. But I'm a Nigerian because I grew up when Nigeria was one nation. So as a Nigerian, I don't care whether my president comes from the east, the west, the north, the south. I don't care whether he's a Muslim or Christian or a pagan. I just want a man that has, or a leader that has integrity, that is mm. sincere about the development of this nation. That's what I want for 2023. I want us to know that we are powerful and we have a voice. And that election malpractices happen everywhere. They're rigged. We saw the American election and we saw what happened. Mm -hmm. But when you go out to vote, what you do is you narrow the margin for people to, to rig, commit yeah. fraud, mm -hmm. to rig. So I hope in 2023, we will go out and we will vote. That's it. Yeah, that's so um, stay tuned. Ruth is next after the break. <laughs>